That's a will. 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 All that down there is oil. And where's all that oil coming from, you might ask? That is coming from my 7.3. And right behind me, we've got this 1999 F250 7.3. If you guys are new to the channel, this is my daily driver. This is my work truck. And I've owned it for a little bit over a year now. And it's had this very small oil leak the entire time that I've owned it. And at first, I thought it was the power steering pump because you guys know, if you know these trucks, power steering pumps are very prone to failure. And when things start failing, they start leaking. So I thought it was that because it's all in that general area. Well, one day I took a degreaser, I soaked down the bottom of the engine, the frame, everything, and I pressure washed it. And I wanted to start with a clean slate so I could see exactly where this oil was coming from. It's my daughter you hear in the background, by the way. Um, but it was the oil cooler. And normally when an oil cooler fails, it's not necessarily you see the leaking. Normally it mixes coolant and oil together. And mine has not done that. It's been leaking for over a year now that I've owned the truck. I did throw in some, N I think it's NT or NPT, NTP 205. It is a stop leak that works fantastic. It's super hard to find in stores. Advanced Auto Parts sells it. But if you're looking for a temporary fix to buy you some time, that works great. It is not a permanent fix. But I did some shopping. I was having a hard time deciding on exactly what I wanted to buy. So everyone says to buy Ford OEM parts. Well, I will tell you the price difference between Ford and Dorman was insane. So I ended up going, where's the logo? I ended up going with a Dorman full replacement. Comes with new gaskets, comes with a whole entire oil cooler. Uh, that way, if there's anything that's about to fail on the inside of my oil cooler, oil cooler and cause the antifreeze, or not antifreeze, the coolant and the oil to mix, I can stop it with a new one. It had good reviews, but there's a lot of people on forums and Facebook groups that say to buy Ford OEM, that they bought these aftermarket ones and they fail within a couple years and you don't want to do it twice. Well, I'm going to tell you, I paid almost $200 for that. An OEM Ford one is like upwards of $400. It's double the price. So, I mean, if I can get three or four years out of that, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, I'll do this again in three or four years. I just can't justify spending $400 when there is a name brand parts company and it's been around for years selling it for half the price. Now, I'm not buying some Chinese gaskets or some Chinese oil cooler. I still spent almost $200 on that, but we're gonna test out and see if that doorman works. But first, I need to drain the coolant and then we will drain the oil after that, but I'm gonna get the coolant going first. I've got a new five gallon bucket over here because my coolant is less than a year old and it's got the Ford additive in it. So I don't really wanna waste it because it's not cheap. Uh, so I've got a clean five gallon bucket. I'm gonna pour it into that. If the coolant looks like it's dirty or anything, I'll go ahead and replace it. Uh, but start off by putting in this clean white bucket uh, so if there's any contaminants in it, we can see it and know to replace it or not. But if it looks fine, uh, if it has just a couple of particles, I have filters, I can run it through and clean it all out. But we're going to put it in the bucket, get that drain in because it's going to take a little while and then we'll drain the oil and then we'll start taking everything apart. I've heard this is a very hard process. That's why I bought the full replacement, but unfortunately you can't buy it all together. If I could have bought it with the ears and everything on it, I would have done that but it's not sold that way. So we're gonna have to pull the whole oil cooler off, separate it, put in the new one. But first, we have to drain everything. There is a little tech top valve that is on the bottom of your radiator. Right here, you just turn that and it drains. As you can see, my coolant still looks pretty good. Now I know Ford comes back with red coolant. I did a complete flush about six or seven months ago where I flushed the system actually 24 times because the previous owner was running tap water in here. Um, and it was very rusty, and it took a lot, a lot of flushing to get it out. Um, so, hopefully this all comes out good. I was looking up in my reservoir, and it wasn't looking promising up there, so hopefully I don't have to buy any more. Uh, but eventually I would like to replace this because it is pretty stained. I did pull this out and completely clean it, uh, but I could not get all the staining out of it. So I'm gonna let this drain for probably 20 minutes and see where we're at uh, because the video I watched um, I'll link it down in the comments below. I don't remember the name of the channel uh, But he was draining this and then pulled out the he pulled out the 
the block plug and it caused a vacuum and was making a big mess. So I'm gonna wait for that to drain and then do that. Alrighty, and this right here is what I was worried about. So even after doing 24 total flushes when I flushed this, our coolant still looks a little rusty. So what's nice about this is just about the entire vehicle is going to be drained now. Uh, so this is just about finished dripping. So I can bring this bucket back over to the engine block drain. I'll show you guys where that's at. You need a 3 8 drive ratchet and an extension. It does not use a socket. We're gonna break that loose and drain the rest of that coolant into here. Then our just about our whole system will be drained after that. There is another drain over here on the passenger side on the block. I'm not gonna be messing with that just because I've heard horror stories of it stripping out. It's over behind the starter. It's not easy to get to. So instead of fighting with that, we're just gonna do the driver's side drain because uh, that's where we're gonna be working at anyways. Uh, so I'll have to pick up some more coolant tonight. It's a five gallon bucket and that is just about full. So it looks like we're gonna need about five or six gallons of coolant, which is what I went through last time when I flushed this. Actually, I went through about 10 gallons of coolant just throughout the flush, uh, cause I was running water through it, flushing it, and then I added coolant and then after driving it, thermostat opened and more came out. Um, so, go ahead, drain that and drain the block, then should be good to start our oil. So it's gonna be hard to show you guys, but you wanna disconnect your block heater that is right there, and then right up above it, right there to the right of the oil filter, there's a plug, and you wanna remove that, and that's gonna drain the rest of the coolant out of your system. As you can tell, there's some green coolant on uh, right, be right behind that oil filter uh, housing. So that tells me that this has been leaking coolant out the back. And what looks like oil on the oil filter is actually coolant as well. So this oil cooler was on its way out very, very soon. So I'm glad I'm doing this today. Let's go ahead and get that pulled. Well, she's a pisser, that's for damn sure, but uh, it's a quarter inch drive, and it's the one above it. It's not the one I thought it was, it's the one above it. Um, but we got her out, and she's just a pissing away, for whatever reason, it's the exact same color as piss. Uh, but it comes out quick. That little, that little bit on the ground. Just a little bit and some on my face, but I ain't new to this. Drink that, drink that shit right up. It tastes sweeter and candy. I'm joking, disclaimer, don't drink this. You'll freaking die. All right, a couple hours have gone by. Uh, everything has been opened down here and draining. So a five gallon bucket of coolant is just about full. It's still randomly dripping. Uh, but one thing I noticed is I remember changing the oil on this truck before and it basically filling this pan and I'd say there's probably eight or nine quarts in there and this truck holds uh, just below 15 um, so that doesn't look right uh, I don't know what the deal is there might be a quart left in the oil filter because uh, I haven't flipped upside down so the pressure might keep it in there uh, but I don't know what that deal is on where my oil went because uh, this thing does leak a little bit of oil from the oil cooler. Uh, I know it also leaks the antifreeze, but it leaks oil from the oil cooler. Unless I'm burning oil that bad, should not be missing, you know, four or five quarts of oil. That's it's a little scary because I just checked the oil uh, probably about a month ago was the last time I checked it. And it, it was halfway up the, the full line on the dipstick, so it's a little concerning. So you have three bolts uh, that hold the oil filter housing on. Uh, you want to loosen those and then, of course, your oil filter's off. Um, you want to loosen those, remove your block heater cord, uh, inspect it, make sure there's no wires broken because you don't want that to burn down a truck. It does happen. Then you have two bolts at the front of the oil cooler housing. You want to take those out uh, while the other three are still in. You know, loosen the back three 
take out the front two and then take out the back three and then you're gonna whittle it out from the back. I would love to show you guys, uh, but there's not a good place underneath the truck for me and the camera to work together. Um, there is a fantastic video I will have a link down in the comments. It's a smaller YouTube channel. Uh, he actually just posted this video like a month or two ago and I watched it the other day and he goes very in depth, shows everything step by step. Uh, this man puts the camera in places, I don't even know where he's putting it, and he shows everything. So if you're looking for an in-depth install, check that out. I'm making this video just to document the process on this truck as I show everything I do to my vehicles on my channel. Uh, this is not necessarily a how-to, but if you're curious about it and you're watching the channel, this will help you out with it. Well, I don't know how well you guys can see, but that made one heck of a mess underneath the truck there's oil everywhere but as you can see we got the oil cooler out you know i heard lots of horror stories about it being super hard to get out the top bolt on the front so hard to get to guys i have that milwaukee uh 12 volt fuel cordless ratchet uh and that thing made slight work break the bolts loose run them out uh, i will let you know that there is oil and antifreeze that are still in the oil cooler so the second those bolts loosen it starts coming out that's where that mess came from but 100 percent my oil cooler had failed the gaskets were shot they almost looked like they were torn or something i wonder if it's been replaced before it, i don't know i'm gonna have to do some research but my oil pan i can see some like rtv coming out the side of the oil pan on this truck if you guys know anything about these trucks in order to replace the oil pan gasket you have to pull the motor, either that or cut the cross member. My cross member's not cut. I've seen trucks where they've been cut and rewelded. Actually, a truck, when I was looking for a 7.3, I went and looked, that was that way, and I stayed away from it. Because, you know, if it's welded properly, you're not going to have an issue, but that cross member is structural. Uh, so if it's not welded properly, it's going to fail. Um, so I don't think this motor's ever been pulled. I don't know, though, because I'm not the original owner. Uh, but... Oil cooler's out. I'm gonna go ahead and get it separated. I'm gonna show you guys that whole process, uh, but I can't do it with her. It is a very messy job. So once she goes down for her nap here in a little bit, we're gonna get it separated and show you guys how to get it back together. All right, so here's our oil cooler. And on the oil cooler, we have these tabs that you can fit a pry bar in between to pry the ears off. There's one on each side. You wanna be pretty careful with them because uh, you can damage the ears and the ears are freaking expensive I think for both of them uh, individually they're like 150 to 200 dollars a piece now looking at this my guess is that this is the gaskets have been replaced before if you look the o-ring on this one you can kind of see the outside of it almost looks like it had failed our block heater is super rusted and grimy my guess is from the owner before me running tap water in it, but we're gonna go ahead and get these separated. So start out with our small one. This is not promising because this tab is already bending. I will say, if this tab breaks, I am welding something to this oil cooler. Because I am not fighting getting that off. Guys, this is not looking promising. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, that's rough looking in there. That is why you don't run. Yep, this is the whole reason I wanted to replace the whole oil cooler. So all these little pieces coming out of the oil cooler the parts of the gasket that failed on the inside good thing I got a hole replacement the whole point of this cardboard was to keep oil off my tailgate I ain't working too well boys it's looking like we're about to have a problem it is so coated in oil that my hands are slipping across the pry bar. Ow, 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 fuck, fuck, ow, fuck, ow. 
that hurted. It is like so freaking close. It just won't budge. Like it starts to come off and then it's about when the pry bar slips. Oh! I hope I'm able to get that zoomed in in slow-mo. <laughs> Y'all, I'm not gonna have any skin left on my knuckles. You are a whole entire bitch. And the tab just broke. I knew it was gonna happen. I hope this is metal so I can freaking weld to it. Here, let's try this way again. One last Hail Mary. Come on, God, baby, be on my side. I guess that was his answer. So I think the oil sounds safe, right? Latex gloves and welding and flip flops and surrounded by oil. Let's make a YouTube video out of it. I burnt my truck to the ground, replacing my oil cooler. still hot but Thank you, Alan Key. All right, what do you want to call yourself for sacrificing your freedoms? Okay, so these ears, I'm gonna soak in some purple power, or not purple power, some super clean, because that stuff works amazing, and they're big supporters of the channel. So we're gonna soak this in some super clean, get all this broke down, clean it, and then we'll start reassembly. Well, truck has moved, not under its own power. It is still dripping oil, so I'm gonna have to keep cleaning up the driveway, but we got everything cleaned up out of the garage. I'm gonna have to go back over that with the pressure washer. That's where that big pool of oil and coolant was. Uh, but went and picked up some more coolant last night. Also picked up some parts cleaner and commercial grade uh, degreaser. So this ear of the oil cooler is looking a little bit better. Uh, but this one over here is really fighting uh, to get the grime off. So I'm going to absolutely drench it and see if I can get it cleaned up. Uh, I want both of these to look you know, as close as possible to new. If I'm going to have them off the truck and spend all this time, I might as well get them looking right. Um, and then we will assemble everything back together. But I want to get these looking as new as possible as clean as possible I uh, just you know if I already have it out why not make it look better um, but if you guys have an issue with the tab breaking on the oil cooler like I did yesterday that Allen key definitely worked sacrifice an Allen key I have so many of them not worried about it uh, but yeah this I'm definitely glad I ended up going the route of replacing the entire oil cooler itself um, because that is what it looked like on the inside that's from the owner before me running tap water throughout the motor because uh, that's that way on both sides 
but there's gasket material and everything stuck on the uh, insides of that cooler so it definitely was failing I can only imagine how my truck is going to run now um, it never ran hot it always ran right below middle on my temp gauge on my dash which I've always heard those gauges are not super accurate so wasn't ever really worried about it never had an issue with the truck overheating uh, but I imagine I'm going to get a lot better fuel pressure, or not fuel, oil pressure, because uh, it's going to keep it cooler. It's not going to be getting as hot and getting as thin. Uh, so my injectors will probably be better. My fuel mileage will probably be better. Uh, it's probably going to run cooler. I imagine this oil cooler was not helping keep oil cool, was not helping flow coolant. So this is going to be a big, say upgrade, but this is going to be how the truck was supposed to run. Um, I'm not happy I waited so long to do this. This has been leaking since I bought the truck, uh, but I kept putting it off because I've always ho heard horror stories of doing this job, and to be completely honest with you guys, it's not that bad. Uh, so I'm gonna get everything cleaned up, get it all reassembled, and I'll show you the process of putting it back in. Well, per usual, what should have taken, you know, five, 10 minutes, took me about 45, almost an hour. Um, this ear would not go on. I broke that ratchet strap brought out this big heavy duty strap and still put this one on. This one snapped on with both of them. This one I had to try so many different positions and finally I literally said this is my, my last try and I put it down on this chair, put my weight on top of it, pushed it down and it finally snapped into place. I took it back apart twice, re-lubed everything. I thought maybe you know there's a dry spot and it's not going together. Uh, I don't know what, what it was. Hopefully I didn't tear an O-ring. Um, I'm praying. If I tore an O-ring, guys, I'm going to search every inch of the internet to find a whole together piece. I don't care if I have to pay five, six hundred dollars uh, if, if I have to do this again, I'm placing the whole thing. Uh, it's not a hard job. It's just a pain in the butt. Um, so this is together now. Now it's time to put it back in the truck. Almost done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for, the oil cooler is back in. I was going to try and film it, but, you know, getting this backside, you can see it to the shiny. Getting the backside done, not hard at all. Those front bolts up there are not hard. They're hard to keep the gasket on and get the bolts started at the same time, uh, but it is on. New fuel filter, or not fuel filter, oil filter is on. Everything is tightened down. Like I said, I'm not twerking it. Uh, I just did until I felt like it was tight enough. I didn't want to over tighten it. I also did not want it under tightened. Uh, but now we just have to fill up our fluids. So obviously oil is the most important one. So we're going to do that one first uh, because truck can't run without oil. Can run without coolant, just not very long. So, fill that up, fill that up, and then I will film the first startup, make sure it does not leak. I'm sorry this has been such a poor installation video. I try to do stuff, you know, a little bit better sometimes, uh, but this one was not the easiest. If you've ever worked on a diesel, they're super, super, super dirty. Uh, I've had to wash my whole body and change my clothes three times today uh, because when she takes a nap, I need about 30 minutes to work on the truck. And I can't touch her when she's dirty, or when I'm dirty, or her, either way, but I've got quite the mess of stuff I need to clean up, so I need to get this done, because I got work tomorrow, and uh, I need a truck, so let's fill her up. Oh, I forgot to film for a startup, and it uh, shut itself off because it wasn't building oil pressure, so I checked the dipstick again, and it was about a little over two and a half quarts low. Uh, I forgot to pre-fill the oil filter, so I'm guessing that was it. Uh, hopefully I didn't damage anything. Try again. Look at this turret all shined up. Alright, so I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I filmed that video a little over a month ago. But you know, life happens. If you guys have been following my channel for a little while, you guys know I used to post about three times a week. Now anymore, I post once a month if I'm lucky. 
uh, running a business, having a newborn, and just doing adult life things have kind of taken over. I'm 25 years old, I'm moving up in my life, and YouTube has been put on the back burner. Once we get everything situated, be where I, I want to be at, uh, I plan on picking the camera back up and, and filming a whole lot more, but that has not been the top priority. Uh, but just to fill you guys in with the oil cooler, I did it about a month and a half ago. All oil leaks have stopped. I no longer have an oil leak underneath the truck. The only thing that leaks is my CCV reroute that I did an atmosphere reroute. I have an, a catch can kit for it uh, to stop the leak because I don't want the truck leaking. Um, but no more oil leaks underneath the truck. The oil cooler fixed all those problems. The truck actually does run a little bit cooler now, um, but you can still see the oil cooler in there. It is all still spotless. That is the oil filter. I have not touched it since that day, so you can tell it's got a little bit of grime on it, but nothing crazy whatsoever. Um, so everyone talks about how scary doing the oil cooler is on this truck. It is not, not bad at all. To be 100% honest with you, if I wasn't watching my daughter and I could just work on this thing straight, no brakes, would have been about a four, four and a half hour job. And that is not bad whatsoever. Everyone says, oh, you need a whole weekend. It's a 12 hour job. Go ahead, buy yourself a Milwaukee cordless ratchet. Uh, that makes life so much easier with getting those front two bolts out. You get the, the socket on there with an extension, break it loose and buzz it right out and you don't have a problem. And then putting it back in, the only difficulty was keeping the gasket with the two bolts in, getting it lined up. It took me like maybe six seven minutes to get it all lined up get the threads started by hand and then just zip them right in zip the back in went back over it with a normal ratchet just to make sure they were tight don't know the torque specs i got them what i felt was appropriate by hand and i haven't had any issues uh so i will leave a link and a pinned comment to all the products that i use in this video i bought everything off amazon uh the Dorman oil cooler i bought off amazon that comes with the gaskets that you need and then i'll just leave a link to some ford motorcraft oil because you will have to change the oil i'll leave the oil filter and then some coolant and coolant additive for you guys to run because you do have to run a ford coolant additive in these charts to prevent any um cavitation from happening inside the heads and all the coolant passages throughout the motor uh, so do run that additive i am running it in the truck i ran it when i flushed the cool uh, the coolant before but if you guys made it into this video thank you very much i promise filming will get better as time goes on so stick with me uh, just a whole lot taking care of a baby trying to work on the truck and film uh, but i want to document the process for you guys that have been sticking around with me for the last four and a half years of me building these trucks and things and i just don't want to give, give up yet but got this girl shined up yesterday and peep the new trailer if you guys haven't already go subscribe to gtfo detailing on youtube that is my business. I own a mobile detailing business and I document all the things and milestones that I do. And we're about to start some day in the life vlogs of detailing cars and all the things that I do every day. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end. See you later.